Konnichiwa. Welcome to the Jandals in Japan podcast. Kia ora, Catherine. Kia ora, Jane. How are you? All good. <laughs> Happy birthday to us. Or yes. Congratulations to us. Yay. Yay. Hang on, we need a reaction. Let's get the reaction going. Ah, wow. Oh, not Yay. fast enough reactions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday um, to us what's yes. the birthday it's our one year anniversary of jandals in japan wow very exciting look how far we've come from a dream basically my dream that i wanted to do a podcast about mm. new zealand businesses in japan and vice versa and here we go one year later since mm. the idea actually a little bit more isn't it mm. So obviously a lot has happened, but I just want to play a little clip for you of something that we recorded in November of 2021, so a year and a half ago. And this is Jane and Catherine's first ever idea or jam session about what yeah. this podcast could be. Have a listen. We were talking just before um, we hit the record button about what we'd love to do with, mm. you know, we're both Kiwis. We love Kiwi land. We love Japan. Um, there's so much that needs to be also told about the New Zealand story and Japan and, and Japanese going into New Zealand. And we think, well, I think you and I, and you also woke up with a dream. And you can tell us about that in a moment. But I think we could do something around New Zealand and Japan and tell those stories because Kiwis are just a little bit humble, you know, a little nail sticking up, get shot down, the tall poppy thing. But I think you and I are well-placed to be the ones that tell those New Zealand stories and tell the success stories of Japanese in New Zealand. I think we could rock it. We're both bilingual. We could do some things in Japanese there. We can play with it. It can be our playful Kiwi, Kiwiana podcast. You know, yes, we'll think of a yes. great name because you'll get inspiration um, during yeah, it'll, sleep it'll and during your meditating. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the other day, I was just a few days ago, I well, actually, Catherine, it's not, you know, you did mention to me, we should do a New Zealand, something about New Zealand podcast, maybe New Zealand business kind of podcast. And I thought, yeah, yeah, it sounds great. When am I going to get time to do that? I don't have time for for things like that. Um, something and changed. Sort of, yeah. And then the other day, I just woke up with this this sort of like the, I, it wasn't the word of God, but if you, you could put anything, this like voice in my head, like, you have to do a podcast with Catherine about New Zealand. Okay. Like I woke up, with that, that, you know, something about New Zealand. And that was yep. this very strong message that I had when I woke up. And I don't normally wake up with those kind of things. Oh, my goodness. How young I'm looking. I feel like <laughs> I've got long hair. We both <laughs> changed, like, haven't we? You had longer hair. Yeah. I had different glasses. Yeah. We have changed, but we know a lot more now than we did a year and a half ago or so when we recorded that. We know the name of the podcast, which is, of, as you know, Jandals in Japan. And that, me waking up and with the voice of what I sound like, my father's voice in my ear saying, you have to do a podcast with Catherine, which is, was what I finally needed to get going and say, okay, let's do this idea that you've had, Catherine. It's magical, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I've had a, a visitation from my yeah. <laughs> dearly departed father. <laughs> oh I do my goodness. remember you yeah. saying that so distinctly. I'm so glad you mm. played that back because it was fantastic at that time that you had this vision through listening to somebody telling you this and it mm. just knew it had to be. Mm. And that was November 2021. That was November 2021. Here we are, March 2023. Yeah, we've had what you you've been calling it a quarter of a century of episodes, so more than twenty five episodes. Yeah, we've just Wonderful had twenty seven, I think. Yes, growing and list of guests and friends amazing. of the podcast. Yeah, variety. I think you know the old statistics say if you get over eight podcast episodes, you're on your way. And there we go. We're, we've sort of kept going from strength to strength, and we have a lot of people to thank who have been really, really great supporters and evangelists of the podcast, people who have introduced guests to us mm. who have shared episodes. And we can't thank you enough for being supporters in that way because that's how, you know, that's how a Kiwi network works. 
and we've loved that, especially the support we've had from the embassy and from NZTE, but also other friends in the community who've been just, just f absolutely fabulous. Just really want to say thank you so much for that. Yeah, I really love how the further along we go on this process, the more I see the New Zealand community in Japan. And it's kind of been hidden, maybe just from me, but I think we are slowly unveiling these people and what they can do and what they know. And it's becoming more clear the potential and the opportunities that there are and the people doing great things. So yeah, I'm excited to see what happens next with, yeah. <laughs> with Jandos. What's yes. been one of your favorite memories from the last year, Jane? On the podcast, of yeah, course. Yeah, let me have a think about that quickly. I'll delete this part if it goes on for a long time. Um, favorite moment on the podcast. There's a lot, right? Yeah. For me, I loved the meeting that we had with Native Sparkling. And oh, that was awesome, that we, wasn't it? So oh introduced God. them to Ian Kennedy, and from there, Ian Kennedy introduced us to other speakers as well. But I loved that meeting we had. I felt like this is it, building the community with those beautiful guys from Native Sparkling. And then I think one of the other things I loved too was when we had Icky, we met at Icky for the pop-up. And we just had people turn up who we didn't really know were going to come. And even, you know, Jennifer Shinkai, our fantastic Brit supporter, came along as well as a support for us knowing what it takes to launch a podcast. It was just that community aspect for me is something that's coming up for me as one of the, you know, two of the really great memories so far. And that lends itself also to when we went to Beppu mm. and we were at the J Japan New Zealand Business Council conference and that was just superb meeting so many jandals on the ground mm. and new jandals for interviews as well <laughs> G, we yeah too. professor g it was so fun to meet people in person and so it's that combination of online and offline isn't it it's not just online it's not just offline i think it's that it makes it work so well my favorite memories or I mean, you've named quite a few of the good ones already <laughs> but uh, one of my sort of favorite things was as we started out people we would tell them that's called channels in japan and people would say great name yeah. and nobody would say what's a jandal no. why why have you called it jandals in japan you know <laughs> nobody said anything like that just great name can't wait to listen and then we would we went from nobody knowing what jandals in japan was to going to various events handing out a card and someone saying oh your jandals in japan i've been listening to you well yeah i've heard of you i know you so we sort of went over this hump and now it's getting to the point where we went i went to an event a few weeks ago and someone screamed jandals <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh my goodness it was it was lovely. really funny so that's so just lovely. over the point of the year so i think that for me that's been a real highlight Oh, it's so lovely, isn't it? And I mean, I have to say to my mum, she's bought me these Jandals memorabilia, iconic Kiwiana things as well. She's right, right into it. Um, she knows it's the first year anniversary and she's so excited because it's, it's, she knows it's been a triumph for us to mm. do this and to actually do something that's New Zealand related. And my mm. mum's an Aussie. So there we go. I mean, that's oh, saying everything, isn't yeah. it? When she puts that aside and has lived in New Zealand for such, such a long time. And, mm. um, has bought me some jandals. I won't say. I might just wear them sometime soon and you'll see what they are. But oh, yeah, cute. it's been really great doing that. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Sokoto, for your Thank support. You, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the name Jandals in Japan really came up one night. We were having, I think, Thursday night, Friday night's e drinking online. Had a little tipple. And we let our creative juices go wild. And I know I've got this notebook in front of me that says getter and I don't think we went with getter in Japan but we went it's got rocking the getter in the land of the it hasn't finished that sentence but it probably meant rising sun mm, but then the it getter. does actually mm. have jandals in Japan I'm going to show this because people can see it jandals oh, wow. in Japan, yeah. very messy writing and then this tagline yeah. that we had yeah. about bringing the land of the long white cloud to the land of the rising <laughs> sun <laughs> It was a moment, right? That's yeah, January it was a moment. 13th, 2022. Mm. So we mm. had already decided the, the date by then. You mm. know, the, we had already decided the name of the podcast on that date. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. it was not a proven, I didn't have a proof concept, but over the last 25 episodes, definitely done that. And there's lots of things to look forward to coming from Dandles in Japan in the next year. Yeah, and we'd love to hear from you what you thought was one of the、mm. funniest or the most interesting parts of the po podcast over the last year. If you have the time and inclination, please do pop us a little line to tell us. We'd love to hear、mm. that. We know you love lots of it, but what was your favorite? Yeah, episode, tell us your favorite episode. Comment, tip that you heard over the last year.、Mm. Alrighty, so I think it's time that we we get on with the actual episode that we're here for, Catherine. What do you think? Shall we? That's right. Head on get, over there. Let's head on over there. Jess Garrity, take it away with your fantastic episode about all that you are in Japan. Kia ora, Jess. Welcome to the Jandals in Japan podcast. Great to have you on the show. Hi guys, how's it going? Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. We love to start with a warm up question. So, our question today is What's your favorite place to go to for a slice of New Zealand in Japan? I really, really like, and actually, Catherine introduced、wow. me to the place that I'm about to say. And it's quite close to the New Zealand embassy. Uh huh. So, and also I've recorded a a commercial for Whitaker's there. So,、um, it's quite a memorable place for me, but it is、um, Supreme Cafe Supreme. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah.、Um, it's just, it, well, it's the only place that I thought I could get flat whites. Obviously, we've changed since a couple of years ago, but、mm. it's a wonderful place. And above, You know, there's a New Zealand restaurant as well. So it's a whole little block of sort of New Zealand culture. So that's one place that I like to go when I'm out that way in、mm -hmm. Oku Shibuya. So it's、mm. a little bit in the middle of Shibuya, but、um, on the way to, yeah, the New Zealand embassy, it's always a nice place to stop off at. Yeah, it's a great place to meet up with your friend before you <laughs> head to the embassy, right? Right. We knew you were going to say that. We knew. <laughs> we were predicting before we got on. It's a, good, it's a goodie, definitely. But I, you had, I had forgotten that I had introduced you to that place.、Yeah. I know that we met at the dinner upstairs there, right? We had、yeah. uh, in the、yeah. past, that was a while ago, but. Wow, I don't remember that, but that's great that you got an introduction I hadn't even randomly knew about. Yeah. And they have a great little rooftop too. You can go up on the roof、yeah. on a nice day and have your coffee up there, which is kind of、yeah. unusual in、Fun. Tokyo, right? To be able to sit outside and,、right. and things. So, yeah, that's pretty cool too. How about you, Catherine? Your, your favorite place、Ooh. to go for a slice of New Zealand in Japan? It kind of depends on what I'm after. So,、Ooh. if I'm craving lamb chops, I will go to Wakanui. Oh, but if we're talking、yeah. coffee, let's bring it back to coffee. I do kind <laughs> of like all press in Taranamon.、Oh. It's、oh. kind of sophisticated. It's easy to get to up one escalator and it's a very open space. So I quite like that. And I felt,、um, I feel like it, it's really easy to sit down there. You can pull up a chair, you can stay as long as you like. And they have this avocado toast. It's really good,、mm. as well as flat whites、mm. and everything else. And I usually buy some coffee and take it away. So I kind of like that as a sort of inner city place. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Of course, we have to put in a vote for Iki out in、oh, yep. Kiyosumi Shirakawa, is it? Yes. Have I got it right? Yeah. It's、you、quite a long it、right. address. It's not inner city, as you said, for、um, all press. A vote for another Kiwi. Coffee option in the Greater Tokyo area is the Coffee Charlie Coffee Cart, which Hayden from、uh, Japan Rugby Weekly and also a player in the Dino Boars has been setting up. And、Ooh. you can get flat whites there. Yay. So, <laughs> on the go, right? On the go. Yeah. yeah. Out in the fresh air as well. They actually、there. use all press coffee、oh, as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes.、Um, so, if you like your all press, you know, they are mainly around Kanagawa area. Mm. He's got some great merch too, right? They've got a cute little dog as their、He's、emblem. And got, it's very cute. So,、mm, you know, mm, mm, go get it. Go get it. There you go. At least three, four options there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, Jess, you have been on our list、ah, for quite some time to have on the Jandals in Japan podcast. You're one of the well known Kiwis in、mm. Japan because you are a talent on TV. 
like a lot you don't only do that you you know on tv japanese tv radio magazines right you're also really really into the martial art of archery which we will talk about as well you've really expanded what you are doing in japan and we think you are most, one of the most successful jandals in japan having lived here more than 21 years and so we'll get a full bio from you and pop it into <laughs> the show notes but before yeah. we do that, like, tell us a bit about your inspiration right back then to come to Japan. Uh, yeah. Why? Why Japan? Well, uh, at Auckland Uni on the first day, I met a wonderful friend, a person who became my friend and who is still my friend, called Nami. And her father is from Himeji, so the Kansai area of Japan. And her mother is a Kiwi, as you do come up to end of the year and it's summer in New Zealand. And we have wonderful long holiday times. So she actually asked me if I'd like to go to visit her father's family home, which is over in Himeji, because she herself would be going back sort of every year. She would take a trip uh, together with her parents and visit the family home. And she invited me to go and visit with her. And it was sort of honestly something that I'd never thought about before, particularly mm-hmm. much. The only thing sort of in my life that were of Japanese influence were uh, Japanese cars because my father loves cars and but I said yeah sure like jump at the chance to be taken to a magical place right right I'd never been to before so it was just like fun days I thought wow this is just the coolest place ever bullet trains and Mm. these tiny little cars and um, yeah I found myself going back every year saving money during the year on a part-time job and just spending it on a plane ticket Mm. and going back. So Mm. I spent five years at Auckland Uni. I did my master's and uh, went back every year. And then, you know, getting to the end of the master's, I was like, wow, you know, I should probably think about what I'm going to be doing job-wise. And I thought, you know, overseas experience, why not go to Japan? However, the the large problem with living and working in Japan is that it helps if you have Japanese, and I had never studied Japanese before. So uh, I looked online and found that teaching English as a possible job option is quite um, straightforward for Kiwis to be able to to pursue. So I uh, interviewed in Auckland for Nova, which is was at the time was quite a large a Kaiwa, which is just an English conversation school. So you came over with Nova. Yes. Worked for them for a while. Everyone sort of tends to generally move on after a little while <laughs> into yes. other things. So where did this foray into the sort of entertainment industry becoming a Tarento start for you? Was that once right. you got here? Yes. So I had a certain uh, amount of language ability after about five years here. And a friend suggested I go to a, a talent agency and register myself. Because, you know, you could be a model, they said. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Because usually, you know, after 25 or so, modeling isn't, you know, I'm obviously depending on the country, but isn't quite sort of the the industry I had sort of pictured myself in. However, it sounds interesting and fun and, you know, it could be really cool. What could go wrong? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went and I registered and the agency that I registered at was, um, specialized in non-Japanese people Mm -hmm. so everybody on the books however it was one of the largest so they have thousands and thousands of people registered and then I realized that more than modeling this agency was all about tv so I'd happened upon uh, one of the largest non-Japanese talent agencies that specialize in putting people on tv so Mm -hmm. that kind of sealed my fate I think and uh, I went to an audition and I got a regular job so they call it regular it's like you'll have let me see this one is live so you'd have live shoots every every week that's pretty impressive yeah right? it's, it's, it's in, very difficult in the entertainment industry in japan how many regular shows you have is how successful you can right. measure yourself right <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> yes. that's what they're like how many regulars do you have regular right, bangumi, right? Mm. yeah yes. it's, it's yes. your sort of cv that's right, right. Yes. what was the show so the show was SMAP Station. With, oh, um, was it SMAP? Oh, my yeah, God. So, yeah, like was... going for the top. Did you get to meet SMAP? 
The only person who's on the show, so map station, is Katori Shingo. Yeah. So Shingo. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, to meet Katori. He, he is an interesting guy, but um, he, the most fun one, right? <laughs> that's what you think. That's Ooh, what you think, but no. yes, yes. <laughs> but actually, it's uh, the, the the one person that sort of the most seems the coolest and the most aloof is actually the nicest one, and the one who seems the nicest is actually. <laughs> The least friendly. So anyway, I'll, well, <laughs> who's, we the, go? who's, who's, who's the, the fun one fun then? One? The secret fun one. Uh, Kimutaku. Oh, he is. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I, I thought so. Yeah, yeah I thought you were going to yeah, say Kimutaku. Real, so real sweet heart. Real sweet heart. But um, yeah. So we had live. <laughs> she TV. says Kimutaku is a real sweetheart. I love it. Yeah, Sorry, live, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's okay. Okay, <laughs> live TV and yeah, just um, it was. At first, you know, pretty, it was kind of a nervous, ex- sort of scary experience, mm. but we didn't talk all that much. We weren't asked to talk all that much. So to be honest, having that great, like in front of the camera, getting the experience on live TV was a great on the job sort of training method for the next foray, which was working on variety TV, where you actually have to talk and you need to speak mm. about things and you have to be sort of aware of the time that you're talking and it has to be you know compact and you have to be able to speak in small editable sort of mm. phrases and this kind of thing and aware of all the other talentos that are there and this kind of thing so much in <laughs> there i just i also want to know what your audition was what they asked you in the audition what you had to do to sort of prove yourself did you have to do oh, anything in particular well I, no it was just like a self-introduction and you do it on camera so they look at the, the camera, camera test, here right? yeah. yourself yes it was all in japanese which is fine right. so we just did a self-introduction in japanese and asking about my hobbies and i mentioned you know i said i'm from new zealand and they thought that was this is always a really big thing at auditions people are very interested in the fact that i'm from new zealand so they ask where and a lot of people have been there either on honeymoon or working holiday or you that good so overseas experience so you always get somebody in the audition or in the audience or somewhere that's had a connection to new zealand and you grab that mm-hmm, <laughs> and you kind mm-hmm. of you kind of pull that Hold out that. Yeah. Think, yes good. it's nice to be able to especially in a situation like an audition where you know you're quite nervous and that kind of thing finding that that little connection and making friends with someone is very nice and it works to your advantage however they asked me you know like what what are your hobbies and i at the time i could only think of surfing so i used to go and surf at piha which is uh, just a little bit out of auckland you know during the whole of high school so i used to love surfing and um there was a member of the audition panel who also surfed so i was just like oh this is cool this is great we have a little bit of a connection here and we sort of hit it off and that was nice so yeah they just asked me about my hobbies and and it's interesting, interesting isn't it? Because I think every time we meet somebody in Japan, it is almost like an audition that we are trying to find <laughs> that connection with them. Yeah. Right? And mm. once you get that connection, you can yes. remember them later. You can also find yeah. out other things about them and how you can help them in Japan. So I think your audition has pulled out a really important point about how yeah. to be successful here. Mm. Right? Yeah. Mm. Well yeah. done, you. Goodness me. And <laughs> I mean, getting into a regular show, I mean, anyone who's listening who knows Japan, would know that that is really amazing. And then the other one, the variety TV, these seem to be sort of Japanese words. Are they Japanese English? Variety and yes, Japanese know, English. Japanese and Tarento English. itself, talent. Is that also Japanese? Oh, English? Like, yes, Japanese English. So it's very like, especially, I mean, my mom, she's like, so what do you do? You know, are you the <laughs> MC? Are you the MC of the show? And I'm like, no, I'm not an MC. You know, MC is the, then you do use that word, but it's the main, the person who runs the whole show. And that's not me. I'm, I'm, you know, on the side and like a panel of people. Mm, like, yeah. So I'd say TV personality is probably the best that's way a good to describe expression. it. Yes, yes, mm. yes, that's a good one because I've thought, how do you translate that? But TV uh, personality. <laughs> mm. And, yeah, on Japanese TV we do see a lot of these TV personalities who have a very kind of minor part in the show but they are very much there, at least sort of five, sometimes even 10 people yeah. who it's your job to sit there and react to what's going on and maybe speak if 
that's in the script, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's quite, a, you wouldn't see anything like that in New Zealand so much, well, I feel, right? But this is very much. Kind of a hierarchy much... too, right? They'll seat the most important mm -hmm. in the front, it seems, and then yeah. going backwards. The further you back know. you are, like the lower down yeah. the food chain you are, right? <laughs> <laughs> but um, just to give a bit of background information, though, they will send you a questionnaire before this is before the show before you are decided that you'll be on it they send you a questionnaire and it's very involved and this is just the way that i i sort of take a chance to uh, take my research about new zealand and i learn new things about new zealand they want the the latest information they want something really like it's gonna make you go wow so i'm looking for the you know from my own, you know, common knowledge and basic knowledge of New Zealand and this kind of thing, I can can fill in a questionnaire easily with a TV show. But they want the most, you know, the up to date, latest stuff. What's on video? What can we get from YouTube? So I take it as a way to learn more about New Zealand at the same time as mm -hmm. um, doing my job. So this uh, questionnaire takes a couple of hours, to be honest, to fill out, and it's not paid. However, this becomes the base for the script which Japanese TV, it's all scripted. And there are script writers, you know, for a 30-minute daily show. Someone will be writing the script mm -hmm. every single day. So, yeah, you try to get as much awesome information as you can squeezed in there. Things that are a bit shocking, a bit interesting, funny. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, finding this kind of the juicy information, if you know what I mean, it's quite, it does take quite a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So you have your your questionnaire and then if you're lucky when you get there on the day they give you a script and they're like you're gonna have to say this so you get your script on the day a couple of hours before the show is actually filmed and they have the way that they'd like you to say it or you know the certain facts the things that you have probably written and your questionnaire has been mm. translated into your script oh my so goodness. you take your script and try to memorize it as fast as you can and then yeah you go into the the actual the recording and uh like you said you, you're doing your best to react to how what the what's happening in the studio at the time and then you know throwing a bit of a few keywords in there and you don't want to be a dick and talk for too long because everybody starts rolling their eyes and look at them and they're taking <laughs> all the time because you're shooting on a schedule and you have yeah. a recording schedule and you're going to be you know told from like the sidelines to shut up if you talk for too long and this kind of thing so it's a delicate balance between wanting to stand out and you know people getting annoyed with you <laughs> yeah and i mean i've been involved in a few tv shows it's amazing the time and preparation it goes in to create just 30 yeah. minutes of tv it's it's epic yeah yeah it is yeah. right but it is yeah. often you know the scripted thing is is what i thought it was jess and to hear you say that really just reinforces that i remember <laughs> After the Christchurch earthquake, some uh, TV crew, I think it was Asahi, came to see me and I was a lawyer. I am a lawyer, right? But they had to put books behind me <laughs> to interview me because otherwise I wouldn't look like I was a lawyer without the tomes of, you know, <laughs> volumes behind me. So you had to go and get them from the library into the meeting room to make me look like a lawyer. It was quite funny, right? But that's often what happens, I think, in Japan. And maybe it's not only Japan, but uh, you've made it really interesting. I remember once you did a... Uh, you talked about was it marmite you were introducing oh, marmite and the yeah. people's reactions to that were like phenomenal like, yes they yeah I, yeah so the like marmite, it. honestly it's and you know and you know what's going to happen and you know what they're aiming for and yeah. and going back to what you did say about the books it's all just about we call it is goodie which is just making a picture it's a visual thing as well as a you know watching it so it's watching and listening tv is fabulous in that way so it's all about getting it right visually as well. So they wanted a specific reaction. And to get that, they have to go about it a certain way. So obviously you load the bread with Marmite, not like we'd ever have it, you know, Normally, centimeters no. thick Normally on a piece bread. of bread, right? Yeah. right exactly. um, and I'm all like, you know, what I have to say, it's got so much vitamin B. And, you know, if you eat this, your skin will be gorgeous kind of thing. And it's like, okay. However, I did say, you know, don't spread it on too much. And they're like, why, why? And, and you know, the person next to them, you know, puts it on as thick as as possible. And they just about chop trying to eat it because it's... Yeah, of course. <laughs> but, you know, this is... And, it makes and great TV. Laugh and go, yeah. yeah, right. So the reaction was amazing. But, um, yeah, it's just kind of sometimes you feel like it's a bit over the top. It's quite... Um, 
yeah, that's Japanese TV for you kind of thing, especially the going back to that Japanese English, the variety TV shows. So it's just the TV right. shows that are all about lots of different things. Yes. But it is a huge sure. escape, isn't it? Japanese TV is an escape for people. And I'd often yes. ask people, what did you do on the weekend? Oh, I stayed home and watched TV. And I'm like, really? And, but then as like, they are escaping. And mm. Japanese TV has always provided amazing tours of the world. Like you can uh, tour yeah. the whole world from yeah, your yeah. sofa anytime you like on Japanese TV. It's amazing. I love it. I'm like, well, I don't need to go there. You have been there. <laughs> <laughs> it's so well done that you feel like you've been there, Jane. You, you caught out really a really feel point. like you've walked mm. down that street and tried that pie or whatever it was, you know, <laughs> from the comfort of your sofa. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it really does provide something that people are looking for in Japan, which is kind of the escape from, you know, the hardness right. of their daily life, right? Right, right. Mm. What's your favorite show, Catherine? Oh, I like like Chibi Maru Kuchan. You know, <laughs> you know th like the ca little cartoons, because the Chibi Maru is usually so good with the latest or the most, the, the seasonal thing, right? They're always doing yeah. the season. So they're coming into like spring and they will have Hanami, they'll have the Sakura yeah. in, the sh in the background of the, the cartoon, right? Or yeah, the this is manga. true. It's just all and the things that they're eating and the things that are related to what the kids and the story and the yeah. uh, family are up to are all related around what's actually going on in Japan right now. And I just love that it's so cute and they have dramas and uh, that are just like us. Uh, mm -hmm. So I like that. That's where I get my uh, thrills from that particular. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so cute. And also it's just been long lasting. It's very popular. And it's some way, uh, again, as I say, you can get that connection to somebody if they like that yeah. too. Mm. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. How about yeah. you, Jess? Have you got a favorite TV show that you do? No, oh, given that you, you know, have appeared on the TV, you may be a little bit more discerning no. what you like, but anything? Um, there is a show called Moya Moya Samazu. So it's uh, a comedian duo who pick a certain area of Japan. Usually it's in central Tokyo and they go and they do a walk around. And it's mm -hmm. just like they'll happen upon little local stores. They'll go inside and do this whole interview with the owner and they'll eat the food or they'll happen mm -hmm. upon, it'll be like a karate dojo or like mm -hmm. something and they'll go and do it or it's a pottery studio. And I like that they go to these little places right. each time in Tokyo and they'll take it slow and it gives the local people in the local area a bit of promotion on this nationwide TV show. And, um, yeah, it's just cool to see a different, it's not like promotion for tourism purposes or, I don't know, it just seems to be a little bit more grassroots, a little bit more down to earth. And you can just go in and see from those, com the comedian's point of view, these little shops and these little areas and meeting people, the shop owner and that kind of thing. I like that. Mm, nice. That's sweet. Yeah. yeah that's really, yeah. that's, it's so valuable to those stores and yeah, things so. right to say oh we were actually on this show and so and so came here right. and then it's they'll very, have very an tight. influx of customers because people will yeah. go there as well so that's really really valuable to them yeah. i have to give a a shout out to a new yeah. show that started recently and i don't know the full name but it's like yabai showa era where they show <laughs> what the, the kind of like things that used to happen in the Shore era, nice. um, which is like sort of what the 70s, 80s, yeah. if we sort of like, well, if we went on for a long time. Too, James. 60s, yeah, 60s. Maybe. Okay. So some from, of us might be Shore babies. I'm a yeah, Shore baby. Shore baby. Yeah. Shoah. And so my husband is a Shore baby <laughs> as well. And so my yeah. kids are born in the Heisei era, but they're growing up in Dewa, right? So they're sort of, re they remember now, right? So, and yeah. we're watching the show together as a family and we are all in bits of laughter of the yabai, like the risky things that used to happen in the Showa era. Sure. And, but my yeah, husband's right. like, yes, it was totally like that. Yes, we did all that risky stuff. We survived, you know? So yeah. it's, it's a really great sort of juxtaposition of what, Japan was like and the very safety Japan that we have today uh, where yeah. everything is very <laughs> sort of clean and tidy and safe it wasn't always like that you know mm -hmm. um so fantastic tv show there's an, there's one coming this week I think on that if you happen oh. to be watching so you don't only do 
TV these days, you are also very much involved now in the Japanese martial art of Kudo, which is archery. That's right. Yeah. Tell us about that. Because if someone comes over to your Instagram or something, that's what they're going to see, isn't it? Jess <laughs> shooting arrows, <laughs> Jess on a horse shooting arrows, <laughs> this sort of thing. Tell us a little bit about that. So Kudo is the Japanese martial art of archery. And I started about five and a half years ago. However, the first time I saw the actual someone doing the practice, and I attempted to research and find out where a place was. It was about 12, 12 years ago during Hanami, so cherry blossom viewing in my local park. There's a dojo inside it that has, you know, you can see in. So it's the first time I saw these people with the huge bows. And I didn't know the name of it. I'd only really come into contact with, like, karate uh, in Auckland. However, never, like, I never knew it even existed. So I was sort of like, what? Is this what's happening? It looked very, just to watch it, it was super calming. So I thought, wow, this is nice and just watching and it's really chilled out and then moved really slowly. However, they're using these amazing bows that are really, really long, over two meters long. So I thought, wow, this is kind of cool and I'd like to see if, I don't know, at the time, 12 years ago, silly question, but can a, can a non-Japanese person do it? I wonder kind of thing. And, you know, how much Japanese do you have to do? And Honestly, I just had no idea about what it was that I was looking at. So I had a little research and found out that it's called Kudo. And I popped over to my Kuyaksho, so which is my, you know, at the time, borough council. We can say maybe we don't have those anymore in New Zealand. But little um, the council and I asked the people, do you know anywhere where I can go and practice Kudo? And they all gave me, you know, shoulder shrugs and teeth sucking <laughs> and like... <laughs> You know, like, no, but no. And I was like, I went to the oh community activity section where there's like, they emphasize in the local paper for like, you know, club mm. activities and hobbies. And, the, and they're just like, so, the okay. Suck. So I yeah. went online and I had a little look. And at the time, Saitama, where I live, which is north of um, Tokyo, had no really set good websites and information. And I found myself pregnant again after that. And then having, you know, a toddler my second child and then a, the third child and I was sort of I had my hands full to be honest for the next well sort of eight or nine years mm -hmm. as you do when they're under five and uh, I had a radio show that I was going to be on and the, the man the MC of the show actually had studied kudo during high school which is quite common mm -hmm. uh, for club activities you can say bukatsu in um, Japan, a lot of high schoolers and university students and some middle schoolers study Kudo. But um, so he had surpassed Kudo practitioner and he sort of, we were talking about like, what excites you? What would you like to get started on? And I said, actually, there's something that I've really been wanting to start for years. However, I have never had a connection or information. And even after asking people that no one has any idea. So it's Kudo. And he's like, oh, okay, I know people and I used to do Kudo. And I'm like, there you go. Like, this is it. So he invited um, his friends who are also practitioners. And I got a connection to a beginner's class that you have to take in order to be able to start learning. So that was in Saitama. So it all just kind of the ball started rolling from there. And, um, yeah, I haven't looked back and it's been really awesome. And now my whole Instagram feed is it you is. know, work. Yeah, it's the TV. It's almost, job. Does like, Jess still work on TV? <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. But, right. but yeah, it's it's taken over my life. You can see on the feed from about 2017 where I announced like I've started it, and it just gets like it creeps in more and more and more to where it's becoming yeah. like my entire personality. So, uh, and that's that's a reflection of of real life. So this is what it's like at the moment. So it's I found that. Is something that people, other people are really interested in too. So I'm really glad that it's not just me, but it's given me, um, you know, after talking to Jennifer Schenk, I am not sure hmm. if um, yes. the I've listeners to that. Are, yeah. are, yes, I have heard, but, you know, her Ikigai, really getting a nice work-life balance and finding something in Japan that really connects you with Japan and then, you know, making it Ibasho, the place, your own community, a place for yourself to be. So it's really given me more than I ever expected. So it's obviously it's shooting arrows and this kind of thing. However, it's also connecting with people, really, really learning 
manners and etiquette, uh, language, tradition, culture, that, I mean, it costs me 100 yen to go and practice every day, but wow. it's given me it's given me so much more than I ever could have imagined. So it's just sort of opened all these different uh, doors for me, yes, but things like archery on horseback, that's just, yes. that's very fun. <laughs> <laughs> Has what, any TV program <laughs> talked about you doing this? Have you been filmed doing the, this activity? Yeah. Yes. So actually that's one of the cool things that I wanted to talk um, today. I'm not sure if it's going to still be on air by the time the podcast airs, but NHK World came to see me the other day and it's in English and available to, oh, to view around the world. So I will give you the link. and Excellent. Yes, and everyone will be able to Brilliant. watch the TV show about judo. How many foreigners are doing this? I have not seen anybody else. Jess, you seem to be have taken a real big step to do this. And as you say, it's broadening your communication and really changed your life. Yeah. And I think that's part of it, isn't it? It's being involved in something in Japan beyond your actual business or your activity yeah. you're here for. It's spreading your yeah. wings. Do you know if anyone else is doing this? Yeah, so I kind yeah. of make it a point to really connect with non-Japanese people who are living in Japan who are also practitioners. So I've got a little handful. And actually, right. I write for a magazine called Kudo Nippon, which is a Kudo a quarterly kudo magazine and that's in Japanese however I my corner that I write my little um, articles are I, on purpose I find non-Japanese practitioners in Japan and I interview them in Japanese and find out you know what are their motivations and this mm -hmm. kind of thing so mm -hmm. I take the, mm -hmm. that chance and that uh, opportunity to really get to know and network and meet other non-Japanese people and then pop them in the magazine so they get a bit of you know, PR for themselves okay. too, because it's always interesting from, I think, from a Japanese uh, practitioner's perspective to understand why, uh, you know, this country's person is doing, you know, what they mm. think is interesting as well. So mm. it's cool to connect and connect other people as well and this kind of thing. So yeah, quite a few non-Japanese people, however, a lot of people are not on social media or, yeah, you know, just Facebook or this kind of thing. So it's cool to be mm. able to connect with them and yeah, actually, there are, there are quite a few, but they're not as loud and annoying as me, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> loud and annoying. Do you think, though, there's something in the fact that you're a Kiwi, that you're an Aucklander, or you know, yes. that you, that's made you have this successful X Factor? Is it really the fact that it's quite a curious thing? Is there something in that that makes you a successful person yes. here? Yes, and it's not just Kudo related, but, you know, being on TV, it's honestly the the brand, the the image of New Zealand in Japan is just honestly positive and amazing. And it's, you know, just being born there and being raised there has given me this most cool, soft power. Like people will may have ne maybe never have visited New Zealand. However, they have had some positive interaction with New Zealand. Oh, my friend went there on honeymoon or I've seen it on TV and it was beautiful or it's just like the general image of New Zealand and Japan is so good and amazing and beautiful and wonderful and this is really really strange to say but worked I don't want to say worked to my advantage but the fact that I was just born there and raised there has given me this amazing like a halo, like an angel's halo, like a little glow, like I have. Seen. It is a halo. It is a yeah. halo. It's a privilege. You know, it's a, really? it's a, it, I haven't even earned it. Yeah. We just got born there by luck, yeah. Yeah. right? And so it is a privilege that we bring to everything that we do. And I don't yeah. think we know it well enough. And perhaps people listening may not appreciate the fact that being a Kiwi in Japan is a really special thing. It's powerful. And it's the brand it's that we need powerful. to also protect, isn't it, Jess? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I powerful. think being aware of, you know, even if you're not on TV or if you're not that sort of in the in the public eye that much, it's just being an ambassador for the country when you're out and about. And um, because people do have this wonderful image of New Zealand and it's just kind of, you know, playing your part mm. over in Japan. Mm. And, um, yeah, just being responsible for that and being aware. Exactly. And, yeah. I'd love to hear any thing like obviously the entertainment industry also has challenges as well it's not all 
fun TV yeah. shows and things. What are yeah. some sort of pitfalls or things that you see happening for yes. people who are like, yeah, I want to be on Japanese TV. <laughs> um, and or yeah. where should people be hearing alarm bells if they're told something or something like that? I'd love to hear a couple of things that you might know from your experience. Yeah. In terms of pitfalls, like things that I realized after I had started, mm. auditions are not paid for generally going to an audition and in my case you know having children I would need to book a babysitter if it's at night time and like this costs me money it costs me money to go to a job which I may not be getting so auditions are quite tricky transport isn't paid or I should say transport is part of the guarantee which is your the word for the the payment of the job so you'll get it's not added on top transport it's included as part of it so if you're living further away or you need to get a shinkansen or something like that you have to quite in factor into the amount that you're getting paid yeah things like overwork so if the shoot the recording does go over the payment amount has already been set so but you you need to be the kind of length you have to wait until the whole recording is finished and you may be 30 minutes over one hour over in the case where the production is not quite Usually they're quite good, but you do have to take into account that the time might be extended, but you're only getting paid this amount and that's been decided on and it doesn't get extended. So there are kind of, yeah, things like labor related things that are sort of, you don't really realize until you are sort of in the thick of it. And then when you're contracting, usually as a non-Japanese person, you visit several agencies and you can get contracts with all of them and you sort of juggle different job offers and um, that sort of thing and you give what we call keep so you say first keep or second keep or you're not available so they'll ask your schedule and if you're a hundred percent available for that job you'll say first keep or yes i'm available for that job if you have another job that you're waiting for the result for but you'd still like to you know, you pile them on top of each other and you're probably going to get one or the other. You'd say second keep. Mm -hmm. The problem with saying first keep for jobs is that suddenly if you're sick or your schedule doesn't work out, this kind of thing, you can get charged for the full amount that you're going to get paid plus production costs if you cannot make yourself available or be there. So this kind of thing, it's really important to check in your contract what the agency what their processes are for if you're not available if you do for example you know you have it's the pandemic at the moment so you do get corona and you can't get there even though you can prove you know you have the test you can take a photo and send it off to your agency's manager they might charge you for having to cover another person Being a no the show. cost involved mm. you you bear the costs which is quite scary to think about so you have to be quite conscientious and responsible with keeping your schedule in order and that sort of thing yes that's a good one to know yeah i don't think many people would know that that was a thing that you would be responsible for the cost of yes it just depends not on being the able agency. To be there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Right. It's interesting, isn't it? And I think that's one of the really good tips for people who might think, I want to do what Jess is doing and get into talent, okay. you know, and do this on TV. And I think when you called out the transport thing, for most yeah, right. regular employees, you get paid. It's additional, right? Yeah. It's additional. And so that's right. why you've yeah. talked about that. Yeah. yeah. So these things that you need to know and read the contract well, right? Yes, definitely. It's what would be detail. your... I guess we want to say, well, one big gem, your nugget from your own experience that you want to memorialize for, for listeners and sort of talk about it so that any current Kiwis who are considering coming into Japan could be like you to be successful, Jess. What would be your one, <laughs> successful. But I think the one success, thing? The one yeah. thing. Well, first of all, I think success is, it just depends on the person. And for me, it's sort of, you know, just being, happy more than you know rich or famous but yeah it depends on it depends on what you're aiming for however I kind of have a couple of nuggets and they mm -hmm. maybe already have been sort of you know popped up on the podcast before these however, are Jess's nuggets so <laughs> it's okay my nuggets my Your nuggets, nuggets. <laughs> my nuggets are uh learn the language and network mm. and also what have does that mean what does network mean okay so in the case of Kudo, 
it's quite a small community and you get to know people. So with the explosion of social media, it's made meeting practitioners from around the world so much easier. I can contact, connect with people. We can meet online. We can have interviews. We can, they will introduce as we'd like to know in Japan, we get introductions to higher ups or other sensei or people that I can go and visit. And then those sensei or people or, you know, your network just expands or exponentially over time. And you start having job offers via your network that are not available sort of anywhere else. You get these amazing opportunities and you're invited to things that um, would not happen otherwise. So I think find your, just if you know, like branding wise, your niche or what, what you're doing business wise, then try just to connect with people. LinkedIn is a great place. Social media is a great place. There is face, I mean, face to face networking is you can't beat it. Sort of expand in your area, and then also areas where you think, huh, that's not really sort of my business area or what I'm interested in. However, in the long term, you might find that you'll come full circle. And people that you met a couple of years ago that are in a different industry to you may be really relevant. You know, five or ten years down the road, things like tourism the tourism industry i wouldn't have thought that um connecting with people would be i don't want to say useful however we you know benefit like mutually benefit um i started up a, a kudo dojo where i help anybody can come and learn you don't need japanese and it's nice what? to have you started yeah, your kudo <laughs> just slip that one in there <laughs> yeah stop there really Yes, but wow. it's yes, but, that's uh, fantastic. About three years ago, but yeah, just it's nice to have it's nice to have a place where anybody can just come and try. So having having you know your network and um, basically networking has helped with with everything and with me and my whole life in Japan. So I've realized having things like networking and introductions and making use of those with the Japanese language have been sort of invaluable. Like really, right. really amazing. Mm. Yeah, for many different reasons, business mm. and personal. And language, I mean, for me too, language, if I'd not been here. Yeah. For language, if I hadn't learned language, I wouldn't be here for as long as I have it. Oh, so no, the no, other no. point for you is language as well. It's been critical. Yes, really, really. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine living here without being able to speak, to be honest. I mean, if you want to form those deeper connections to a certain extent, not having it is, I mean, it's okay, but having even our want to be learning it, uh, Nihongo, Japanese language, is enough to start off with. And then, yeah, it doesn't have to be this massive, like rigorous thing. Uh, honestly, living here after five years, I got to a point where, you know, I was living comfortably and um, I could converse fine. And I started working in a foreign owned company but the office environment was Japanese so I was answering the phone in Japanese everyday business Japanese and I'd never learned it you're just using it and it's like on the job and you, you learn what you need to know and it's survival and then but that having that really 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 affected me in a positive way so you can form connections and really really much deeper I think on mm. a deeper level because yeah. yes people know that you're taking your time and you're passionate and you want to I don't know, you just feel more invested and yeah. people understand that. And if they see Great. that you can speak Japanese and they hear that you can speak Japanese, honestly, like the whole way you get treated changes mm. in a very, very positive way. Mm. Definitely. Even if it's badly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, I, yeah, I pretend I can't speak Japanese, but usually. <laughs> That's also useful. When certain people come around and want to sell you yes. stuff, the door-to-door -door yes. salesman people. That's right, yes. And on the other side, Jess, anything that you'd say don't do, like just try and avoid doing these little faux pas perhaps or something that you'd say? Um, I don't know. I think like more than don't, just try to be mindful. Just like observant? Or... Yes, try to, especially in Japan where there is a large culture of, the group culture is very popular and there's a certain way to behave in certain situations. If you're not sure of that, just kind of zip up your mouth for a moment and just observe other people and how they're reacting to it. And um, you'll find quite quickly that with the, I don't know, things like body language is, is very, it speaks volumes. So if you can mm -hmm. figure out the body language of, of others and sort of, you don't have to copy them. However, mm -hmm. 
just sort of go with that and see the way that other people are reacting to certain situations. You'll find that you'll be quite, I don't know, just you'll appear more mindful, you'll be more mindful um, in certain situations and, um, you know, places to give your opinion in, in business situations and personal situations, Great giving point. more unsolicited opinion <laughs> where people, you know, it may not be the time or the place. Yeah. Um, people yes, appreciate, so. you know, being things like mindful and polite. Um, uh, they take yeah, no one expects you to show up with your opinions when you're new on the scene. Just shut up and watch, I think, is great yeah. advice for your first trip through the whole year, potentially, of the calendar. And then you can yep. step up more after you've seen how everything works out. And yeah. you, nobody's expecting you to do that. They're actually yeah. quite happy if you just sort of just sit back and watch and, and, and take part and, and do your bit. But nobody's expecting you to step up and say your opinion and be a leader from the start in, the, in something right, if you're right. in the That's situation, true, yeah. right? And what kinds of trends are you seeing right now, Jess mm. in Japan? Like perhaps it's something that you're researching for your next program on the yes. questionnaire. <laughs> but aside from that, what are you seeing out there that's really trendy in Japan? Maybe someone who's listening could, oh, that's a good thing to think about to do. But just from your own perspective, what are you seeing? It might be through your children's life or yeah. what you're doing and seeing through your work. So and I, yeah. it's going to link back to martial arts, but the Japanese government have started a site called um, Budo Tourism, which is martial arts related tourism. Mm. And it really gave me, it, yeah, it gave, gave me vibes of New Zealand and tourism and rugby and overseas study and this kind of thing. Like it's a whole industry where uh, Japan is quite, they have a lot of pride and it's a lot of tradition and related to their martial arts and things like Nihonshu, so Japanese sake, Japanese cuisine and this kind of thing, you know, it starts to become famous all around the world. Things like Budo, which different martial arts, karate, kudo even, kendo, people from all around the world want to come to study martial mm -hmm. arts in Japan. And I thought that that was cool, like that they had thought Eerie. of. Yeah, so they've found dojos and they've made a whole network on the homepage of dojos that will speak English, Chinese, and um, I think Korean as well. So they're offered and wow, you, know, you can just drop amazing. in. Whereas, yeah, the, the thing with Yes, so I thought it was quite innovative, to be honest, because usually it's very, what's Good the word? finding it's... any information about it's it. Going outwards, right? Then realizing right. the, the yeah. way of Budo is actually right. going to be a really great way of bringing people in and not just doing yeah. typical tourist activities, but coming yeah. to the heart of Japan, right? Yeah. Deep understanding. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's it's really brilliant. Yeah. So I like, like, I'm all about inclusivity in things like, all the activities that I do in martial arts, I, I try to show people activities and, you know, introduce things that anybody can do. And, you know, things like a language barrier really stop people from enjoying mm. um, certain activities in Japan and especially traditional, traditional cultural activities. Having a thing like a language barrier, just you don't have to worry about that. Contact directly to the dojo and they let you drop in when you're going to be in here. And it's not an Airbnb, like it's, you know, you're not paying through the nose to get this two-hour cultural experience or something like that. This is the real it's place real and we're going to mm. welcome you and you can either drop in or you can actually try. If you're already a practitioner, you can train with them and it's like, oh, this is a really cool idea. I like it. And just having that whole network set up on a, one website that you can just access and it's throughout the whole of Japan. So it's not just limited to Tokyo. So I like that it's yes, bringing it. people to, yeah, different regions of Japan and you don't have to have experience in that specific martial art, but it's cool. It's really quite a niche. However, I thought it was a really interesting idea. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm sure there'll be loads of people who would love to look through there and see what they could try, or perhaps yeah. they're, they're a practitioner and they just can't find a way to get to yeah. somewhere in Japan where they can practice with people who are welcoming to them. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. I have to ask you one question before we finish. Okay. Behind you. <laughs> yeah. This Behind is... you. Tell us what, what's what are the going yoroi? On? What's happening there? So so one is a yoroi is a, a period yoroi is worn by archers who use bows on horseback. So this is Heian period of Japan. So the shape of 
this one is slightly different to the shape of this one is a kachu, which is um, after you know, guns were introduced in Japan, the guns were used by samurai. So the shape is just a little bit different and you don't really use a blow with that one. But I wear these on horseback when I'm doing yabusame sometimes. Or horseback you wear after. them? Wear these? Yeah. So not this just one, for you know, it's just display. going back Not to just like, a Zoom background. You actually wear these. <laughs> I mean, if you have wow. my my Instagram or whatever, but I think it's it's um I've kind of been obsessed with things like that ever since I was little. So I was all like King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, and I was like Robin Hood, and I was a bit of a that kind of a person, a bit of a freak. Like to me, often if, you know, and jousting on horseback, that was like what I wanted to do when I grew up. Like who even wants to do that when they're a kid? Like to be honest. So you know, when you're in Japan, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So you know, I have samurai armor, and I'm kind of living out sort of my primary school. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. You are. Wow. It's like you're a samurai man. wife in a previous life. I really do. I think it's, as you say, it's come full circle. Look at that. <laughs> so those, both of those you wear. Yes. I thought maybe these are for Children's Day coming on so this May one 5th. Is, this one is, a, is Seku no Tango. So that's like Children's Day, Boys Day armor. However, the size Ooh. is such that I can put it on. And oh, wow. I, I um I got this one off the they're both recycled of course because I you know expensive and then this one is about a hundred New Zealand dollars I found it so cheap and then I, it's it's such that is big actually pretty big usually they're quite small and I mm. contacted the the craftsman who's in Kyoto because I thought how I'm not sure if it's cultural culturally appropriate to be like putting on you know armor that's mm. supposed to be on display and he's like oh yeah just put it on go on horseback have fun. So I oh, connected lovely. with him because of that. Yes, and he was cool. Yeah. He must be thrilled. Kind of, yeah, it's he just must really be interesting. Mind blowing that some New Zealand woman is wearing his armor and it's on horseback fantastic. shooting arrows. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's often the last question of the day. Well, Jess. There's so much more we could go into, but we are so thrilled to have had you on the show and you're just Thank such you. a successful channel in Japan. Thank you for coming and speaking with us today. Thanks so much for having me. It was a wonderful fun. Thank you, Jess, for giving us an insight into the amazing world of archery in Japan, which I knew nothing about, and those amazing things that she had in the background. <gasps> we will obviously share an image of this on our social media so you can see her beautiful yoroi, which is those suits of armor mm. that she wears. Actually wears. I thought they were just decorations, but I no. need to be more observant. Actually, I think on her LinkedIn profile, there is a moving image, and I think now I can see it in my mind. It's right. her in the, one, of the, one of those armors. Mm. Wow. Goodness me, hasn't she done such a lot here? And just mm. like conveniently and quietly mentioned that she's now set up her own dojo where okay. you can go and do yeah. relaxed entry into the sport. Because I would think, oh, I'd love to try that, but where on earth do I do that? Yeah, and the um, hurdle is huge, right? To get that huge. foot in the door for the first time. How do you do it? Where do you go? When do you start at an appropriate time with other people who are also fresh instead of, you know, showing up at the wrong time and trying to, you know, things start at a certain time in Japan, right? April is a great time to be starting things in Japan. If you want to start something new, April. It gives right? you a real ease of entry, isn't it? I'm it just, is it's so it's, easy to start things April, in April. I want to start. It's when I started my business. It just made it so easy to say. Yes, I was already ready in January, but opened it up in, in, in April because it was so much easier to start mm. in April. Yep. This Japan is people are starting things. Yep. Wow. Mm. And I think too, you know, that what else could we be doing in an interest area like that? Budo, right? Tourism. What mm. else could we do? Budo tourism. It's going to take off. Loads of people in our want interest to do that. area. Yeah. What a cool, cool thing. We talk about sports for business quite a lot, and we think about rugby and other sports that are New Zealand centric. But what else could it be in Japan mm. that might lead into something to connect people? And I think that was one big thing, wasn't it? How she's connected yeah. so many different things and people through conversation, from surfing to honeymoons and and things to do with mm. New Zealand she's really managed to do that very well uh, we often hear people say 
connect people or network but she's really gone to the depths of that i think that matters doesn't mm, it? pick up those connections when you hear the person who says they went on the honeymoon follow that thread to a, a slightly deeper connection each time yeah, yeah that's that's great yeah i remember once in a taxi in tokyo somebody said the ta driver said they loved rugby and they loved the all blacks and i have a, a strap you know one of the little what do you call it a, a, a lanyard a lanyard but i had it connected to my keys i just took it off my keys and gave it to him and he nearly had an accident he was so excited about the fact that i'd given him something with oh, all blacks on it so lovely. but it was one of those things that i'll wow. find another one sometime here's this person yeah. who will have this memory and think treasured. about new zealand treasured mm. in a little moment and it's just those little things i think we really need more uh, care mm. about mm -hmm. um she did talk about too being observant and mindful and I loved yeah. how you said, you know, being new, it gives you the release of having to be the one that contributes off the bat. You can actually hold back. Observe. Yeah, you should, actually. You should. Yeah. yeah. Like, shut up. Just be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> a new um, person doesn't yeah. have to have an opinion. Nope. <laughs> and should not actually have an opinion. Yeah. I, and I think, I think wait until you are invited to opine. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Yeah wait yeah that's it and she said, zip, zip it zip it <laughs> especially if you are entering into one of these traditional spheres like yeah. kudo judo ikebana tea ceremony whatever particularly there and particularly anything that's traditional maybe it's an educational like a school student anything mindset. where uh, yeah and be a student it, yeah it, there's like even if it's like a japanese company it'll be appreciated if you are the new person yeah zip it for a bit follow you know you don't need to be like telling them all your brand new ideas from day one and yeah. maybe they tell you something that you kind of already know just oh that's very interesting mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. oh thank you for telling me that that's great to know mm -hmm. don't have to so show that you know everything either right mm -hmm. or that you already heard oh that's the way you do business card exchange or whatever mm -hmm. you just take it in as a thank you very much for teaching me that that's really mm -hmm. great yeah. very useful yeah a little bit of uh, humility won't can go a long way yeah yeah and and then when you are not the lowest on the food chain anymore mm -hmm. when you're so when this is the senpai kohai thing when the new kohai the new lowest on the food chain people come in then <laughs> you can maybe talk right so I'm seeing this like this happen on the weekend and um, for mm -hmm. my son, right? He's joined this baseball team and he's been the newest, youngest member for quite a while now. But finally, we have a new member <laughs> joining and his family is going to be the newest and we are not the newest anymore. The least ex inexperienced or the sorry, the most inexperienced members of the team. Now we have a new position, which is to turn around and help this new person yes. who's just arrived and doesn't know anything. Right, so he's I'm the like, big brother now. How yeah. cool. And so we were talking about this at dinner. I was like, okay, now you are a senpai and you have to be a senpai to this new person and help them and you show them what to do. <laughs> so eat lunch with them. Don't make, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're sitting by themselves. Make sure you eat lunch with them. Mm -hmm. Make sure you show them where to put their bat and whatever, you know, all the... And for me as a parent, now I have to take care of this new parent who, you know, who's joined, who doesn't know anything. It's my job to turn around and, and sort of guide them with what little I do know, but yeah, be a friendly face. And after a year of being nearly a year of being involved in this team, I finally feel like, okay, mm. we've, we've gone over the hump, right? We're right. over the hump now. It's taken a year. It's really, it's really <laughs> great though, isn't it? It's that senpai, kohai, senior, junior is really quite important in Japan. Well, not quite very important in Japan in that mm. way, right? And taking mm. on that obligation. I'm sure your, your son feels more engaged too, to be able to, how can I help this new one? What's mm. he going to do that he's I, thrilled I tripped that up he's on? He's thrilled, right? Now he gets he doesn't have a younger senpai. brother, but in a kind of way, he can have this younger brother to teach the tricks mm. to. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Huh, really yeah. good. I thought that was a great episode. I loved that conversation. Did you have any other takeouts from it? Just that you can do anything in Japan. You can be on Japanese TV. You can set up your own blooming kudo traditional Japanese. Like she said, she's been doing it for five years and she has set up her own dojo in something that's traditional Japanese, you know, pastime, now a pastime skill. 
you can do anything in Japan. Uh, what do we have here? We have, uh, you know, a lawyer who set up their own, hmm. you know, Makes boutique you think, law it? firm. It does make you think that you, you think this, Japan this might be a complicated place, limit. busy place, hard place, language, what do we do? But actually, you can get into anything with very little as long as you're a, a human being. And Japan is really open to entrepreneurship and uh, different ways of doing things. So, yeah, yeah you can do anything. You do anything Great. and look out for Jess on TV. That she's on Yay. various shows. Follow um, her on Instagram. Follow her on Instagram. She's she beautiful she images know. on Instagram. Yeah, she always lets us know when she's on TV. She's got huge, beautiful images. You're right. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah, she's doing us very proud. And, and so that's just fantastic. Keep it up, Jess. Thanks for listening. Make sure you check out our guests' links in the show notes. This podcast is brought to you today by Catherine O'Connell Law and Pod Launch with Jane. If you have a great story you think should be on the show, come and find us on LinkedIn or Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time. Mata ne!